So what is a potential divider? Now, a potential divider is a circuit that divides up the voltage or divides up the potential difference. Lah, uh. Uh, now, how it works is like this. Uh. Now, let's say uh, you have a cell. You connect it to a variable resistor, uh, for example. Now, we know that the resistance can vary, right? Now. So, but let's say our cell has 12 volts. But because you are connecting to only one resistor, which is a variable resistor, the PD across this variable resistor will also be 12 volts. Now, if the variable resistor has a value of, let's say, 10,000 ohm, what does it mean? That means it can vary between 0 ohm to 10,000 ohm because it's like a real stat that you can slide. But no matter what resistance you choose, you will still end up with 12 volts. Because according to Kirchhoff's second law, the net EMF must be equal to the sum of PD. There's only one. So in other words, we can never get a voltage or PD less than 12 volts because your EMF is 12 volts. If you want a fraction of this 12 volts EMF, we need to divide up these 12 volts to two or more resistors in series. So let's assume we take this cell with 12 volts and we connect to two resistors now. Okay, let me just um, write down here. So let's say this is uh, 6 ohm and 6 ohm. So how will the voltage be divided? The voltage will be divided half-half. So each one will also take 6 volts, 6 volts. But if one of it has a higher resistance, for example, this one, let's say, is 60 ohm, then this side will take a higher PD. Why? It's because when you use the formula V equals to IR, both of them will have the same current passing through, so your V will be proportional to your R. So whoever has a higher resistance will get a larger PD, but total must still give you 12 volts. So these two voltages will no longer be 6 volts, 6 volts, but total will still give you 12. And this PD must be bigger than this PD. So how do we derive the formula? How do we calculate the PD across this or across this easily? There's a shortcut. And the shortcut you must know how to derive last. I'll show you how to derive it. So let's start. Uh. So let's draw uh, this cell here. So let's call this V in. Okay. okay now let me just draw nicely. And uh, connected to two resistors, R1 and R2. Okay. So the PD across this uh, first resistor, let's call it V1, okay? So according to our formula for voltage, your V1 must be equal to IR1, agree? And your V in, which is a total voltage, must be equal to IR1 plus IR2, agree? So if this is your first equation, this is your second equation, we take equation 1 over equation 2, so you get V1 over V in is equals to IR1 over IR1 plus IR2. So all the I can cancel. So finally, you will get V1 equals to R1 over R1 plus R2 times V in. So basically, the conclusion is like this. If you want to find the PD across this resistance, then you take this resistance on top over the total resistance in series times the total voltage. That's the formula for this PD. So we can also expand it. If let's say I wanted to find the PD across V2, uh, so let's call this V2. So V2 will therefore be equals to, now take the resistance that we want, which is R2, over the total resistance R1 plus R2 times the total voltage, which is V. And it even works if you have more than two resistors in series. Let's say you have another resistor here, let's call it R3. So, and I want to find the PD across this, let's call this V3. So then V3 will be equals to R3 over, but now there are three resistors in series, so it's R1 plus R2 plus R3, the total resistance in series, times V in. So you can use this formula as long as they are in series. You know why? Because in the derivation of this formula, do you realize that the current cancels? And this only happens if the current in all of them are the same. So you cannot use it if they are parallel. Example, 
Now let's say you have another circuit here, okay, one resistor here, another resistor here, another resistor here. Now, and let's call this R1, let's call this R2, let's call this V in, let's call this R3. Now you cannot treat these two to be series. Then we use a potential divider for this. That means to find this PD, or you say this V1 equals to R1 over R1 plus R2 times V. Doesn't work. Because is the current here equals the current here? No, right not. Because when the current comes over here, it splits. So therefore, since the current here is not equal to this current, then these two are not in series. So we cannot use the potential divider formula for just these two. But what we could do is we can modify a little bit. That means we take these two as say parallel mark because when the current comes, it splits and then joins back. So they are parallel. So we, if we redraw this circuit, it will be similar to V in R1 and then these two resistance, let's call it RP in parallel. So now, is the current here the same as current here? So then we can treat these two as series. Then we can use potential divider. Example, if we want to use V1, so it will be V1 equals to R1 over R1 plus RP times V. Then you can use. Okay? Now, we can also use this formula to find the potential at a point. So what does it mean by potential at the point? Now, let's say again, uh, I draw the same circuit, uh, similar circuit V in. And let's say this is R1, this is R2, and then they want you to find the potential here at this point. So potential difference and potential are not the same because potential difference is the difference between two points. There's potential a single point. So you want to find the potential here, what must I do? So you must first find the PD either from this side or this side. Then only we figure out the potential here. But which side will be easier to find the PD so that we can find the potential here? Now, some people will take here, some people will take here. But the rule is like this. Huh? Now, if this is V in, so let's give a value, let's say 9 volts. Because this side is positive, and this side is negative, can we then say that this is positive 9 volts and this is 0 volts? So therefore, this is 0 volts, this is positive 9 volts. Correct now. So your, the rule is, if you want to find the potential at the point, it is always easier to find the PD across the 0 side, from the 0 side, not from the 9 side. That means not from the higher potential, but from the lower potential, which is a 0 volts. Example, huh? If let's say you find the PD, example, uh, across this as let's say 4 volts. That means the difference between here and here is 4 and up. And how do you find R2 over R1 plus R2 times V in? Let's say you get 4 volts. That means here to here difference is 4. But this is how much? Zero. So this potential is 4. So no extra calculation needed. That means the potential here is equivalent to the PD from here. But if you chose here, total is 9, right? So if this is 4, this so this side will be 5 volts. So therefore, the potential here will be 9 volts minus 5 volts to get the potential here. So to get 4. So it's always easier to find the uh, potential at the point by taking the PD from the zero side. Alright?